Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhair Bagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. And before I start with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start with the game and see how it goes. Got the black pieces here. I'll play the Karukan defense. Starts with c6 forward by d5. Open can take advance or play knight which becomes the main line. So this is the advanced variation and I can just develop my bishop here on f5. Okay, pawn forward and generally you have to take here or just proceed with the development. Either is fine. Um, I let him take if he really wants to. If he proceeds, then I can even blockade that stuff. So I'll just tell out the bishop with tempo, pinning the knight. If pawn forward, then I have to take, but he doesn't play that. So I can now just double up here on this beautiful diagonal towards the king. And I have to take here. Yeah, there's no other option. Takes back with the bishop. And now I have to come back. Uh, so where do I come back? I think queen to c7 is fine. Open can take and I can take back or can advance. It doesn't do any of those. So I can just pin the knight here as well. If bishop to e2 doesn't happen, I can take or just proceed back. Let's proceed back, maintaining the pin. That opens up his king side as well, which is generally not a good idea. So castling would be tough for my opponent here. Can develop the knight. I'll not take with the knight maybe, or I can just take with the pawn. Okay, he's trying to trap me. I'll just get my bishop out of this pawn struggle, attacking the rook, because if pawns forward could have trapped my bishop too. Yes, I had this uh, pawn forward, which would have made a retrieval square, but nothing better than an active bishop. Okay, I can get my knight and probably exchange that with my opponent's knight. Bishop can take, but I'd rather prefer to take with the pawn here so that opens up the file as well. Just in case he now trades off the bishop, the pawn will be weak. Okay, he does take here. I'll take with this pawn maybe. I can take back with the bishop too. Let's take with the bishop, maintaining this pawn structure. Bishop is in the center, so it will always be centralized bishop, which is always nice to have. Yes, pawn forward can break the structure for now, but that's it. Okay. Let's try and identify what are the weaknesses of the opponent. Weakness is the king for now. Right? That can be given a check from the diagonal. I can play pawn forward and play bishop here. Or I can develop the knight. Let's go with the basic development. Let's see what my opponent does. Don't have to be always aggressive, preparing to castle as well. Because I think he's looking for a pawn break here in the center and after I take, things can change as well. Okay, so I can cast on the queen side now. You can go ahead with the knight or I can castle as well. I think I should castle here, just trying to make sure that my king is also safe. Okay, both will play the same moves here, trying to get a better position. Now this is a beautiful diagonal, if I can somehow get my um, bishop there, that can be troublesome for my opponent. If pawn forward he takes, I take back, I lose the pawn. If I play pawn forward, I lose the pawn straight away anyway. That's not going to happen anyhow right now. Need to figure out a better way. So I'll try with the knight first. Maybe go here. And then I can get my queen on b6. Take on the pawn next with the knight maybe. Or I can even threat a checkmate once the bishop is moved. So looks to me to be an okay idea for now. So he goes back identifying the threats. But that gives me control of the center again. I can play pawn forward now. I often cannot take because the queen would be hanging. 
Even I could go here, which attacks the bishop as well as the pawn. So I think this is a good square for the knight too. Queen over to b6, and then I can play pawn forward. Then maybe I can play one more further if he tries to cross me, because then I am attacking the rook on g file as well. Okay, so this can be troublesome. And how do we avoid it? Just by placing the queen here. Still, I think bishop will come anyway, giving me a check and I can move aside. But that actually is a good place for the bishop to stay. Controlling all the diagonals towards the king side. And his dark square bishop will be at the best place if he tries to keep now on d6. Which he doesn't. Instead traps my knight. That's also nice. Um, yes, he can take. Do I have something better here? I have this rook takes. Which attacks the queen. I can take on the bishop next and then take on his rook, other rook as well. And that looks good to me. Okay, so he comes in between. But still, I think I can take. That doesn't change much of the equation. Oh, I can't go here for sure. I take and if he takes my queen, I take back with the rook. And then I lose my knight, but he has got double, double pawns there. Oh, he doesn't save the queen. That's a bad move. That's a losing move. Doesn't save the queen. Now both the rooks are being attacked, which yes, of course, can be saved by moving the bishop. But then he loses because I can save my knight as well. And then my rook will be active. And that game will never be lasting so much. And that's why my opponent resigns here. Let's analyze this 26 move game pretty quickly now. Just to wrap it up, started off with e4 by opponent, then I played c6, followed by d4 and d5, the Karukan defense, and becomes the advanced variation, the most challenging line in the Karukan. And if you're not a big fan of the Karukan, uh, you must check those couple of videos that I've made around it, explaining the details of Karukan. I'll place the link in the description as well. So these are, it's a very nice opening for black, a very consolidated one. And you don't need to make um, attack in the beginning, but just develop in a solid way. And it's pretty much good that you get to have a very solid development because bishop on f5 is always nice. If pawn forward, just continue with your development. All the best moves so far. Pin the knight if your opponent does so. I can take here and gain some more advantage, but I went with queen trying to attack the knight there. Then I took on the knight. Could have actually the best move was to take on the pawn first. Um, next time I can probably improve that as well. But after I take, he attacks me with the bishop and I come back on c7. Uh, knight to f3 and I just try to pin the knight there. Opponent can definitely take on the pawn here. But doesn't bother me because I can also take back. And then I am expecting rook to c1 would be the technical move there. Let's just evaluate once. After I take, uh, op computer says to first sorry for that uh, first castle maybe after playing or just move my bishop away but i think rook to uh, c8 is also good c1 is also good move because that is rook in front of the queen and then i can develop the knight so yeah c8 still in favor of white so that's also a nice move could have been done but opponent doesn't take and i just uh, get my bishop backwards there on h5 then again pawn forward g4 is bad because it's just uh, losing out the control of the king side as well now. So I get back here, then knight to g uh, h4 there, my opponent. I develop my knight, he doesn't take the bishop, but plays f4. Now expanding all the pawns on the king side, so definitely not planning to castle over there. So the only way my opponent can proceed from here is to have some exchange and then probably cast on the queen side. That's what happens in the, the game eventually. So just trying to get my bishop out of this pawn blunders, which can happen. Once you start taking up, you can might lose your bishop as well. So I just try to move it out. And then he saves the rook. I can castle here, but I went with knight to g6, trying to exchange knights of the board. Now, again, don't take with the bishop because then this can lead to pawn uh, forward. And then once you take, and he takes back, uh, yes, you get to save, but then uh, uh, g7 goes off and then uh, can be troublesome as you see 1.8 in favor of white here 
yes you can just make sure that the rook is not going anywhere but you are even neither attacking it so not not a problem there for the opponent queens can go around and then open can castle as well casting would not be bad either you can develop the knight and the game can proceed in a million ways from here as well so you're not going to gain much from it uh so rather uh, i would say just take with a pawn so that the h file is open up for the attack and that can be useful in the end game as well here my opponent takes and i can take with the pawn or the bishop i chose bishop so that my structure remains solid uh, and here queen to d3 by opponent i develop the knight on d7 the best move in the situation opponent casts on the queen side i can play pawn forward i was thinking about this move as well during the game uh, but my concerns was a bit different there uh, because i can now take I, I was thinking if i take then what because then queen can come here and then i can castle so i miscalculated this part that i don't have to take the pawn initially but i have to first castle and then go for it and that would have been advantageous but yeah i didn't calculate it at that point of time uh, so instead in the game after my opponent castle um, i place my knight up opponent castles and so do i and then king to uh, d3 by uh, on b1 there by my opponent and i get my king on b8 just trying to make sure that king is not in front of the queen uh, and now rook c1 by my opponent attacking my queen indirectly because once this pawn break happens queen will be in front of the rook so that's basic move which you should always play and then i get my knight on b6 trying to just maneuver my knight to a better square here my opponent goes back because my plan was to maybe get my bishop active uh, or get just get my knight over to c4 and of course my opponent cannot take because bishop lies ahead so he just went queen backwards so that now if i play knight over to c4 that can be troublesome for me because after he does take and exchanges happen he's now attacking my queen and i can, if i save my queen then uh, uh, bishop goes so that's how things can go and if i now take of course my king will be very vulnerable during the game so instead i just went with a check first moving the king away and then knight to a4 now knight to a4 attacks the bishop uh, so i like that move here my opponent plays um, bishop over to b4 and then i just went with queen b6 and in the game i remember i, am, I was discussing that this bishop has the best square which is d6 will be active and he will control the diagonal towards the king and if that happens that will be troublesome to remove this bishop from here that's why even computer suggesting go ahead and take this with your rook and leave your rook and go down and exchange because otherwise this bishop can be harmful in the end game too and after opponent does take here you can just get your rook active and maybe just trade off with the uh, at least the bad pawn so that you get some compensation for it instead in the game my opponent uh, played pawn forward there trying to just trap my knight he thought that my knight is trapped but it wasn't i took with the rook uh, attacking his queen next he tries to maintain this uh, pin which he thought works but doesn't because after i take the bishop he has to now trade the queens of the board which he doesn't and just takes on the rook and then that's queen goes and it's mate and three from here uh so nothing much left though he could have just uh played a bit better stuff here uh, or i should have actually made the best move which was rook over to d2 that's more compelling than any other move here um, and that is because after bishop goes back we can take on the queen we can take on the bishop anything is fine if we take the bishop here again he takes the back and we can get to have the rook as well and that's another move or you can just try and attack the queen continue to attacking the queen queen can go anywhere and then still you are willing to take on the rook eventually so that's also okay but you will also lose uh, a few stuff during the exchanges yes you are in a more commanding position minus four is winning actually but still you don't have to complicate stuff when you can just simply win so i just went ahead and he just gives the queen and i take it and both the rooks are trapped the best move here is to move the king but i was thinking that he can might uh, just play bishop somewhere uh say try to exchange the bishops and that connects both the rooks but then queen comes over to diagonal and there's nothing much that can be saved if he tries to move ahead of course that's mate in one queen goes over to b2 if he doesn't move uh, he can come in between with the rook first and then the same thing will happen and that would be a checkmate i hope you like the video do let me know your feedback 
keep watching and sharing do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give a thumbs up to the video as well and see you back tomorrow again take care bye bye